what are the best supercar concepts of the 90s. Some styling signs are found in present-day creation vehicles. If you are interested in the 80s and 90s cars please finish this video. You can also share this with your friends and family and of social media to YouTube and Facebook. Number 1 Bentley Hunodiers. The story goes that back in the last part of the 90s, Volkswagen supervisor Ferdinand Peach chose his domain plan to assemble the world's quickest, most impressive supercar. Just he didn't have the foggiest idea what identification it planned to have. The large man in the end chose Bugatti, however not in the wake of running a 16-chamber Uber Bentley past the baying masses at the 1999 Geneva Worldwide Engine Show. Named for the Circuit de la Sartre's Hanodier Straight, the mid-engined Bentley idea depended on a Lamborghini Diablo VW had gained Bentley, Bugatti, and Lambo in 1998. Its Nat Asp 8.0 liter W16 was evidently useful for 623 horsepower, 414 newton meters, and some 350 kilometers per hour, profoundly noteworthy numbers for the 90s. It even had a 5-speed manual gearbox. Would you have rather had this rather than the Veyron? Number 2 Volkswagen W12 Synchro The extraordinary thing about the W12 is that it really worked. Filling in as both an eye-getting idea at 1997's Tokyo Engine Show and as a testbed for the powerfully sharp W12 motor that would proceed to show up in the Phaeton, the Touareg, the Audi A8, and the Bentley Mainland GT and illuminate the Veyron's W16. Requested by the late Ferdinand Peach and styled by a TAL design, the mid-engine W12 Synchro had 414 horsepower, four-wheel drive, and a manual gearbox. After a year, VW demonstrated a back-tire drive roadster, at that point in 2001, it uncovered the 591 horsepower W12 Nardo. In 2002, VW broke a heap of speed records in the W12 model, it lapped Italy's Nardo's test track for 24 hours in a row, averaging over 320 km per hour. Number 3 Portage GT90 the GT90's 5-speed manual gearbox and two-fold wishbone suspension came from the Jag, and it depended on an extended adaptation of that vehicle's aluminum monocoque body. Yet rather than the 220's turbocharged V6, Passage conveyed an all-powerful quad super 6.0-liter V12 building up a supposed 720 horsepower. The blue oval assessed at 0 to 60 miles per hour, 97 kilometers per hour, in 3 seconds level and a maximum velocity someplace north of 370 kilometers per hour. The vehicle's bodyboards were carbon fiber, and it had an overlaid glass vault to cover the tenants instead of an ordinary rooftop just as a spoiler that would raise at, rapid, something the idea could never reach. The GT90 was likewise the first occasion when we saw the New Edge plan theory that would illuminate the styling regarding Passage's street vehicles in the last part of the 90s and early 90s. Number 4 Audi Avis Quattro Would you be able to accept this thing appeared in 1991? Roused via car association racers of the 30s, the Avis exhibited Audi's interest with aluminum, it depended on an aluminum spaceframe frame and had hand-beaten, unpainted, however cleaned, aluminum bodyboards that were simply 1.5 mm thick. The motor was made of out and out less fascinating materials. It couldn't be any more obvious, the Avis was VW Gathering's method of acquainting its new W12 motor with the world. Just none were prepared. So Audi developed a counterfeit out of wood and plastic, painted it to resemble the genuine article, and stuck it in its show vehicle. A working W12 wouldn't appear in broad daylight until the VW W12 Synchro of 97. Audi actually gave some speculative execution figures and specs. It said the Avis would have 509 horsepower, be fit for 0 to 100 km per hour in 3 seconds and have a 340 km per hour maximum velocity. Number 5 Lamborghini Cala Lamborghini was pondering doing a passage-level supercar, something to supplant the Jalpa, which kicked the bucket in 1988, and rival the Ferrari 355, well before the Audi period Gallardo turned out in 2003. The Cala was totally practical when it made its introduction at the 1995 Geneva Worldwide Engine Show, with a 395 horsepower V10, truly, it even had a V10, talk about portending fueling the back tires through a 6-speed manual gearbox. 
styled by Atal design Jujaro. Evidently, the Kala was bound for creation. However, when VW purchased Lambo from Megatech in 1998, it racked the task and started work on the Gallardo All Things Being Equal. Joyfully, the idea is still out there and is by all accounts street legitimate. Here it is on Lambo's 50th commemoration visit a couple of years back. Number 6 Mercedes-Benz C112. An immediate relative of the 1990 C11 Gathering C Racer, the C112 was uncovered at 1991's Frankfurt Engine Show. While it looked somewhat more of its time than the Audi Avis, it was stacked with an astute unit. Undoubtedly, this thing wasn't generally an ideal vehicle, however more a VWW 12-style testbed for future advancements. The 6.0-liter, 12-chamber Merc had the dynamic body control, dynamic suspension framework that wouldn't go into creation for an additional eight years, four-wheel directing, dynamic optimal design, counting the compressed air brake arrangement as observed on 2003's McMurk SLR, refined tire pressure checking, and radar voyage control, in addition to other things. Can't fail to remember the gullwing entryways, by the same token. Merck clearly had requested, however never put the thing underway. Boo! Number 7 BMW Nazca M12. Planned by Giorgetto Giugiaro's then 26-year-old child, the BMW Nazca M12 arrived at 1991's Geneva Worldwide Engine Show. Force came from the 850i's V12, mounted in the center this time, giving about 300 horsepower. Doesn't seem as though a ton, Merck's C112 had serenely over 400 horsepower, yet the Nazca just weighed 1,100 kilograms. It was large, as well. 2 meters wide and well more than 4 meters in length, yet standing a little over a meter tall, it had a drag coefficient of 0.26. Extraordinary for 1991, however these days, a Mercedes-Benz A-Class is slipperier. BMW and Atal Design demonstrated a refreshed M12, called the C2, a year or so later. By that point, Alpina had freed another 50 horsepower from the V12, and its check weight was more like a decent, round 1000 kilograms. Obviously, it never went into creation, yet the legend has it the King of Brunei tossed enough cash at Atal Design they constructed another only for him. Number 8 Alfa Romeo Syrah. Styled by the very chap that did the BMW M12, Giorgetto Giugiaro's child Fabrizio, Alfa, Atal Design Syrah, obviously it's articulated, she gear off, turned into a thing in 1997. Obviously, it had the celebrated 3.0-liter Alfa Romeo V6, however twin turbocharged to make over 400 horsepower, driving every one of the four wheels through a cunning six-speed successive manual transmission. Alpha asserted 0 to 100 km per hour in 4 seconds and 300 km per hour. Atal Design truly needed to place this thing into restricted creation and, get this, take it hustling. Out of the blue, that didn't occur pitiful occasions. Number 9 Yamaha OX99-11 worked around a genuine, yet detuned, Yamaha F1 motor, the OX99-11 verged on being something real. Created in the UK, Three 3.5-liter, V12 engine models were worked before Yamaha pulled the module 1994, having chosen its ridiculous supercar essentially wouldn't sell. The projected cost was evidently around $800,000. At any rate, the three models actually exist, they were imagined together on an occasion in 2018. With the V12 useful for 400 horsepower at a mind-blowing 10,000 revolutions per minute and a check weight of simply a ton because of much carbon fiber utilized in its development, the OX99-11 could supposedly hit 60 miles per hour, 97 kilometers per hour in over 3 seconds and had a maximum velocity of well over 320 kilometers per hour. What's more, you thought the Zinger was creative, with its pair-style seating. The OX99-11 did that 26 years back. If you have any comments or something in your mind you want to share, let us know in comment below. Thank you for watching. Hope you liked the video, please don't forget to like, share and subscribe to our YouTube channel and Facebook channel. Keep safe and have a good day.